Hi class, we're still on 7.7 here. We're still working with composite functions, but instead of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing them, we're going to be doing what is called f of g of x and g of f of x. Um, sometimes it's referred to as fog and goff, just because that's what it spells. But technically speaking, this is saying f of g of x. It's also written like this sometimes, f of g of x. So you might see that. It's read the same way, it's just a different way of writing the exact same thing. And what that means, class, is we're going to put one function into another function. And you always read these from right to left. So you're going to put the g function into the f function. So the g function is right here, and you're going to put that into the f function. That's what that means. Okay? So we're not adding them or subtracting them or whatever anymore. We're going to put one function into the other function. So here's what it's going to look like. 3 times x squared, and x is now 2x minus 1 squared, minus x, which x is now 2x minus 1, and that plus 4. So now we're going to simplify this part. And the way we do that is we're first going to square this binomial, so 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, we're going to get 3 times 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x minus 4x, and a minus 1 times a minus 1 is a positive 1. Distribute the negative sign on the second one, so minus 2x and a positive 1 plus 4. That's what f of g of x equals. So continuing, we're going to distribute the 3 now. We get 12x squared minus 12x plus 3 minus 2x plus 5. So now, our final answer for f of g of x, f of g of x is 12x squared minus 14x plus 8. 12x squared minus 14x plus 8. And that's how you do f of g of x. You put the g function into the f function. So now let's look at letter B. Now we're talking g of f of x, or equivalent writing, g of f of x. So they mean the same thing. What you're going to do is you're going to put the f machine this time into the g machine, or the g function. Put the f function into the g function. So the f function right here is going to go into the g function. So that's going to equal 2 times x, which x is now 3x squared minus x plus 4. Minus 1. Sorry, we still have this minus 1 at the end. So we get this. Distributing the 2. 6x squared minus 2x plus 2 times 4 is 8, and then subtract 1. So we'll just erase this and put 8 minus 1 is 7. That's what happens when you take g of f of x. So read these from right to left and put the right one into the left one. Now 3, 4, and 5 are even simpler in my opinion because now we're dealing with numbers. We're talking f of g of x for which x is a negative 2. So again, read these from right to left. Put negative 2 into g, get that, put that number into f. So first, a negative 2 is going to go into the g function. So it's going to go right there. So g of a negative 2 equals 2 times a negative 2 minus 1. So g of a negative 2 is negative 4 minus 1, negative 5. So that's what happened. We did this. Now we're going to get this number and put it into the f machine. So f of x, or f of a negative 5, because that's what this number is, equals 3 times a negative 5 squared minus a negative 5 plus 4. Continuing to simplify, a negative 5 squared is a positive 25, and a positive 25 times 3 is a positive 75. Minus a minus 5 turns into plus 5 plus 4. So 75 plus 4 our answer becomes 84.
So let's write down what we were supposed to find again. We were supposed to find f of g of x for which x is a negative 2. So f of g of a negative 2. We had to put the negative 2 into the g function and then put that number into the f function. And we got the number 84. Let's try this now for problem number 4. Why don't you guys try this one on your own, actually? Try this one on your own. Pause the video, please. So hopefully you put a negative 2 into the f function. So we have f of a negative 2 equals 3 times a negative 2 squared minus a negative 2 plus 4. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 2 plus 4. When you did this first step, hopefully you got the number 18. 18 is what you get when you get f of a negative 2. So now we're going to put that into our g function. So g of 18 is 2 times 18, or 2 times x, 2 times 18, minus 1. 2 times 18 is 36, and 36 minus 1 is 35. So when we took g of f of a negative 2, g of f of a negative 2, we got 35. And that's how you do that one. Last one, number five here, we have f of h of g of 3. Woo! Nothing too terribly difficult. We're going to put 3 into the g function, get a number, put that into the h function, get a number, put that into the f function. Read these from right to left. So 3, you're going into the g function. g of 3 is this. 2 times 3 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, 5, you're now going into the h function. h, where are you? There you are. h is 4x. So h of 5 equals 4 times x. And x is 5. So h of 5 is 20. So we got g of 3, which was 5. And then h of 5, which was 20. So now we're going to find f of 20. We're going to put 20 into the f function. So f of 20 is going to equal 3 times 20 squared minus 20 plus 4. 20 squared is 400, and then 400 multiplied by the 3 is 1,200, minus 20 plus 4. 1,200 minus 20 is 1,980, plus 4 is 1,184. 1,184 is what happens when we take f of h of g of 3. f of h of g of 3. Whew, massive. There is our answer for that one. Let me know if you have any questions on that when you get to class tomorrow.